Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a piece of backpacking gear that I've really grown to love, and also a category of gear for backpacking that's pretty hard to go without, and that is my primary backpack for three-season backpacking. In fact, I've even taken it on a trip with winter conditions as well. Are you okay? No. You're truly winter camping now. that. And I've managed to fit all my gear in it. It is the ULA Ohm 2.0 backpack and as you can see there are two of them here my wife's right here the purple one she's had that before i even got mine a size small and then mine on the right here is the same exact model pack only it's the large and the fabric choice is multicam in the case of the multicam color only it actually adds a little bit of weight to it so keep that in mind if you are a gram weenie like many of us are now just a little bit of history and the story of how we both came to have these packs my wife and i a while back i would say about a little over a year and a half ago maybe close to two years we started out with a video that ended up being a video series actually saying hey my wife is looking for a new pack she wants to get away from her gregory i believe it was diva that weighed like seven pounds She's not bringing that much crap into the woods nowadays. She's more weight conscious. What do you guys suggest? Now, I won't get into all the details because you can check those videos out yourself if you're really interested. But in that first video, we kind of laid out what her needs and sort of backpacking style was. And in a second follow-up video, we actually let everybody know what our choice was based a lot on the feedback we got. And we got a lot of great feedback. We did read them all. We did, we, we did read them all. all. We read them all. Uh, tried to respond to, to a lot of them as well. And thanks to everyone out there who did that. And that choice was the ULA Ohm. Matter of fact, both of those along with this video are in a playlist all together. So I'll link that, hit the info button on this video if you wanna see those. But for the sake of brevity, we will get right into just looking at these packs. I wanna get in depth as I like to do on these videos. We're gonna look real close at these, all the features, my experiences and whatnot. So strap in if you're ready for that, we're about to do it. First things first, let's just look at the differences between between the two and then I'm probably going to pare down to just looking at Sarah's pack here because it's a little smaller and probably easier to keep in frame. Key differences, like I said, small versus large. And the stats on the website are for the size medium, which isn't here, but it'll be right in the middle. And then I'll tell you my experience weighing both of these and looking at them as well. For the ULA Ohm 2.0, you're looking at a volume of 63 liters or just under 4,000 cubic inches if you like to look at things like that. So I would roughly estimate hers is probably 60, the medium 63, mine's probably 65, because obviously as you go up in size, you gain some volume. Now I will point out something as well, that 63 liters roughly for the medium, that does include all of the pouches and external compartments, not just the interior of the bag. So keep that in mind when you're comparing to other brands out there. There's no industry standard for that or law that says they all have to measure that way. I believe most companies do it this way, especially the cottage vendors like ULA, where they give you a total for all the pockets but there's also brands out there that could be very well giving stats for just the main compartment of the bag or some combination thereof so keep that in mind but that is for all of these pouches that includes these side pouches here everything you're about to see later in this big mesh pouch which some of you may or may not think is fair to include out of that 4,000 cubic inches the mesh pocket here is 500 of that so if you don't want to count that go ahead let's get to the point Another key difference that you can see right away is the fabric choice. A lot of it is aesthetic. It's totally up to you. I believe it's available in an orange, a red, a greenish color, and this all in that same kind of pattern there with the white cross check going on. And then for mine, we've got the multicam material, which is not just a different print, but it's actually a little bit heavier grade material. And that will cost you an extra two ounces, roughly, depending on your model. In my case, that's what my wife got me. And you know what? I'm such a gram weenie that I probably would have shied away from it. And I'm glad that she bought me this pack as a birthday present after realizing how much I loved hers. And she went ahead and got me the camo. I'm glad she did that because really two ounces for what I'm doing does not kill me. And I do like the look of it. And it is a little bit heavier grade so if i took this out as a hunting pack i wouldn't be as worried about banging it up which also brings up another key point these are purpose-built backpacks for somebody who's looking to go lightweight or ultra light you're basically saying look i'm willing to trade off and do a little less ability to get run over by a truck in exchange for the fact that i'm going to treat it carefully and it's going to be a lot less weight so keep that in mind compared to like an army surplus alice pack this thing's going to get shredded far before that, but it's also way less weight. But you have to keep that in mind. Look at what you're reasonably trying to do with your pack 
and then plan accordingly. Now let's get into weight real quick. We'll knock that out and then we'll start looking at these things up close feature wise. The listed weight for a medium is 32.5 ounces. Okay, now I can't tell you how accurate that is because I don't have a medium, but I can tell you when I weigh Sarah's small, it is 33 ounces. And when I weigh my large, it comes to 34.5 ounces, which keeping in mind, they say this fabric adds another two ounces is kind of surprising. So I would say you're easily gonna be very close to, if not possibly less than what they list on the website for the medium weights. That's pretty good. Now I'll also point out, they say that you can shave up to five ounces by taking the removable items off if you really wanna get light. And we'll see those items as we go. But one of those in particular are the organizational pouches on the inside there. I don't have it inside of mine right now. And mine is actually running at, for a large with the camo, 33 ounces. Sarah's can run at 31 and a half if you take those pouches out, but she likes them to organize her stuff. So she's running at 33 ounces. Pretty good for a 60 liter pack. Now, real quick, I will point out, and this video is not about the other models, it's about the Ohm specifically, but there's also a model called the Circuit out there. And if you wanna go on trips where you have either a little more robust gear, either because you just like more stuff or you go into winter and you have you know, heavier gear, there is something called the Circuit that they make that is for a medium around 68 liters. It's probably 70 liters for a large. That'll give you more capacity. I know a lot of people doing the Appalachian Trail. A lot of them certainly use the Ohm, but a lot of them do go with the circuit, I think so they can carry more food. For me, people have asked me why I've gone with this model. I'll let you know right now, we both went with these models because our max trip is about four days five is pushing it. And for the most part, I usually do three day, two night trips. So I can easily get four days of food in here in my experience, plus my gear, plus some room to spare. And I carry camera equipment. So this is working perfect for me, but just keep in mind, there is a circuit, which seems very, very similar to this, just a little bit larger. If you think that that 60, 63 liters is a little tight for going on extended trips. All right. So we're gonna take mine out of the way and we're gonna focus on Sarah's because other than those things I pointed out, they're very similar. So let's take a look. First things first, what do we notice here? We got two very big pouches on the side. Look at those guys. They are huge. Basically a wide mouth opening there, but you'll notice that it does have that basically like some shock cord or something through it that's giving it some rubber bandiness, if you will. I'm at a loss of words. You can shove two water bottles in there if you really wanted to. In fact, here's, this is a, not an actual Nalgene, but a Nalgene size container. And then here's a Gatorade bottle, pretty popular for you Appalachian Trail through hikers, light and disposable. And yeah, they're both in there, pretty good. So you could have that on one side or carry four of them, go crazy. This is really cool. The only downside to it is it's so big that actually, if you're carrying one skinny bottle, it might be a little too roomy for you, as you can see there. Not the end of the world. You can either shove some other items in there with it, or as we often do, these cords here that adjust on the side, once your pack is full, you can cinch them down even tighter and kind of hard to show off now, but when this thing is bulging with gear, you can tighten this line down and go through there or even the loop on an algae lid. Keep it from disappearing on you on the trail. They are nice and roomy, I like that. But as you can see, if you just had a little, what's this, like a 16 ouncer, now this is a 20 ounce smart water bottle, it would be all over the place. And of course you have one on each side and that pocket is made of that robic material, they call it. Very nice and robust, never had any problems with holes, punctures, or tears in that so far after several trips. Oh, wait, looks like she did. All right, I lied. I have one little hole right there. She probably had it leaning against a rock or something like that. I don't think she ever took a fall in this, but you can see there, uh, I do have a little tiny hole. But thanks to that ripstop pattern, which we've got like a diamond going on, in addition to all that tight stitching, that hasn't gone anywhere. And that's honestly the first time I've ever noticed that. I might put a patch or something on that, but luckily it is not spread and that's a good thing. Down at the bottom here, just a little accessory loop that you can attach things to, get creative with that. Same here on the sides, little toggles and things here that you can get creative with. For instance, Sarah often takes a cup, so you just put it through the handle and put the tab through itself, almost like a lark's head, cinch it down and there now that's secure now that might annoy you banging around but then you could tuck it into a pocket or something and you just have a little fail safe so your cup doesn't go flying off down the trail of course that's a very specific example but little things like that are nice to have attachment points and also on the side there you'll notice i kind of touched on it but they have this length of cord running down here so that when you get your stuff in here you may not have the bag at max capacity you want to keep your stuff from shifting around 
just cinch that down until your heart's content and you're good to go and it'll compress your bag so everything's nice and snug and of course same exact setup on the other side You'll notice this does not have a top pouch. If you're used to that, you might be a little scared of that. I know when Sarah was first narrowing down packs to get, she was a little apprehensive about that. And I'll admit, so was I. But we got used to it very quickly. You just get used to not having that pack. And honestly, like I kind of touched on before, this pack is for somebody who's weight conscious or at least trying to get there. At this point in our backpacking career, if you will, we have really pared down the items that we bring. So perhaps in the past when we first started, we would have really been crushed by not having that whole extra. It's basically a mini backpack on top. Those pouches that are on top of a lot of those larger packs. Uh, very minimal hiking, but a whole lot of weight. Oh my God! And, you see uh, this thing? Yeah, yeah. That that's uh, that's a large pack that's there. Because Mike. I don't have any camping food. It's just sausage and potatoes. At this point, though, we don't have as much stuff. We're pretty organized with our stuff sack systems and whatnot, and it's okay. We just know that up top we'll keep, you know, a stuff sack of items we need right away, and we're good to go. So we got used to it pretty quickly. You might be wondering, oh, well, rain or something could get down in there. You're going to want to put a cover on this guy anyway. Speaking of covers, if you're wondering about that, for reference, many people are familiar with the Sea to Summit Sil Nylon pack covers. This is a medium. They listed at 50 to 70 liter pack cover. It does work just fine on both this small as well as my large with room to spare, even if I fully expanded it. So that is an option for you. Me personally, though, I prefer a Dutchware Argon pack cover. Instead, it's about half the price and half the weight. This baby twenty dollars and under two ounces the stuff sack is my own from something else in fact it actually does crush down even smaller like that pretty nice and this is what I use and Sarah uses as well same size fits both and it's nice it's actually quieter than the sea to summit and it stretches over and like I said it works just fine on both so that's what we use and again that's by Dutch where it's the argon pack cover in fact Coming back to that top one more time, if that's really a deal breaker for you, I noticed, and I don't think this was available when Sarah got hers, I could be wrong, but they have for an extra 15 bucks or something like that, you can upgrade this to a roll top enclosure, and then all of those fears can be washed away. Pun intended. All right, so that covers, pack covers, and the opening on top there. Let's actually open it and look inside. Opens up pretty good like that, and you'll notice that now that I have it undone, it gets a lot longer, so. You can really stuff this guy down and have it as a small pack. Almost, I use this often as a day pack sometimes, my own. But if you got more stuff, you can really get this thing going lengthwise, jam some more gear in it. When we open it up, just a straight tube inside, straight shot down. Nice and simple. There is no separate entrance on the bottom or anything like that. It's just one straight down kind of shot. Inside, you'll notice those accessory pouches that I was talking about. This one right here is kind of just for well, whatever you want. In Sarah's case, I believe she puts like some toiletries in there, stuff she needs to grab quick because it is attached up towards the top of the pack. So even if this thing is nice and full, you can reach in and pull this thing out pretty easily without even looking for it. And then the other optional thing, by the way, I think this probably weighs about a half an ounce. This one weighs about an ounce. This is actually for a hydration pouch. You could put a Camel Pack down there or an Osprey brand, whatever hydration pouch system in there and then on the side right where it says h2o you can get right through there like many packs and you can get the tube out there in sarah and i's case we don't use hydration pouches anymore just because we're light enough it's not a big deal to take our pack on and off that's debatable that's totally up to you but either way she still uses this to organize her stuff she might put stuff in there that she wants to know exactly where it is because again it starts kind of towards the top of the pouch. She can find it, reach down in there, or even pull the whole thing out and look for stuff, shove it back in. Just one more layer of organization, only adds an ounce and it's integrated right into the system. It does clip right off if you'd like. Just undo that and slip it off and it's out of the way. And really, that covers the inside, that's it. So you would cinch it down, slide the toggle. Back here is a line that runs to the front, clip it like that and it adjusts. So if you don't have much in there, you're in day pack mode or you're really ultralight, cinch it down like that, cinch your sides and you're nice and compact and compressed. Maybe you got some more gear, no big deal. Just let some slack out and now you can get that thing all the way over your head and full of gear. Pretty cool. Back mesh pouch. I didn't touch on that yet, did I? 
I love this thing, we both do, is endless. It seems to eat everything. Now, obviously you put stuff out here, you're not as worried about getting wet, at least in the beginning of a rainstorm until you can get your rain cover on, right? But generally we put stuff out here that we wouldn't worry too much about getting wet. But you can shove extra snacks in here. Maybe you take off a layer, you know, you got a sweatshirt that just came off. This is a pretty big sweatshirt. Look at that, ate it. And I still got room to put some other stuff in there as well. So that's nice. Although in my case, a lot of times when I have a shirt or a layer that I don't want to wear, I put it underneath of this guy when the pack's nice and full and cinch it down so it hangs on top there and it's readily accessible to me like a rain jacket or something like that so i really do like that stuff sack on the back there now i will point out one thing though this pouch here fabric wise is going to be your weakest point on the pack it's just a thinner material it's meant to stretch there's really not a lot of ways around the fact that compared to all the other spots in your pack this is going to be the most susceptible to damage so just keep that in mind now this is the one hole in this pack i actually knew about and it's microscopic you probably can't even see it it's just a couple of the little mesh areas that ripped on her first trip she hit a thorn when we took this to arizona i believe so at first i was a little like uh oh is that gonna continue to happen but really i think it was bad luck on her first trip ever since no more <laughs> hopefully i won't find another one and i don't see one that's good uh, no more holes since but just keep that in mind when you're laying this guy down on the ground maybe put it this way if it's a rougher terrain you're on because if you just throw it down on a rock or against a bush that has some thorns or something that could get damaged and one thing i just noticed today i'll bring my pack back I was looking today. Sarah's had her pack for about a year and a half. I've had mine for six months. So there's about a year between these two models. I don't know that it's gonna come across on film. It's very hard to tell even to the naked eye at first, but this material on my outer mesh pocket is more robust. When I look at it, the weave is tighter. It doesn't look as much like a mesh net. It looks more like just a fabric that happens to stretch. And I haven't had any problems with holes. That's probably mostly to luck, but I would say it certainly helps. So I think they've kind of improved on their mesh since then, which is pretty cool. Flipping it over, we're gonna talk about the straps, but let's talk about these pockets real quick. Those of you who've seen my video where I used this pack, the Grayson Highlands video, I really gushed about this. I love these hip pouches. You can fit so much in them. Now, mine might even be bigger, let's see. Uh, no, they look pretty similar. Now mine might be a little bit bigger, which brings up a good point. When you buy these packs, you pick the actual pack size, which is based on your torso length and some other factors. Read the website. They'll give you great tips on that. And in addition to that, you pick the hip belt size, two independent things. I think mine is a slightly larger hip belt size, the length here to here. It's probably different. Real nice padding on there, which I like as well. That's a huge difference compared to my other pack. How comfortable these hip pads are. Not only are they like an inch thick, but they're huge. So the chance of missing your hip and not having a nice full contact is pretty minimal. And you can see here, unvelcro that, and this will slide up and down so that you can adjust it for your particular height. And I know buying online, we went through it. I'm sure a lot of people do. You might get nervous about not being able to try this thing on like if you had gone into a store or something. I'll tell you what, our customer service experience with these guys was great. We did the measurements on the site. My wife's like 5'8". Based on height, you would think she would have done a medium, but she's like 90% leg. So based on the torso numbers, we went with the small. She got it at first and she was like having second thoughts, thinking it wasn't right. Finally, she sent an email and inquired about the return policy, which they're cool with they will swap it out for a different size no problem but when she emailed them they got back to her pretty quickly and what they said was that's fine but first why don't you just send me a picture of you wearing the pack so she took her phone we snapped a picture of her wearing the pack the way she had set it up and they replied to that email and said based on what we see you actually have the right pack size just make x y and z adjustments we followed their instructions and we're good to go so we saved ourselves from sending back and forth a pack that probably was the right size so kudos on customer service for that now back to the pocket uh i guess not much else to say about that but it's a nice huge pocket compared to other packs that i've had where it's like narrow like that you can fit a lot in here easily could get wallet, keys, a GoPro, or even a small handy cam. Camcorder would fit in there. 380, Compact 9, maybe some food, snacks, all kinds of stuff. I love this thing and I've used it for lots of different things, especially because I film when I'm out there. This is really handy. I've even, if you watch that Grayson Highlands video, I took a dehydrated chicken salad meal, rehydrated it. You're supposed to wait 15 minutes. I just shoved the whole meal, was able to fit it in this pocket, walk along, and then bust a spoon out and just start eating 15 minutes later without even taking my pack off. Yeah, that's probably pretty nerdy and extreme, but it does point out the fact that I love these hip pouches. 
Let's move on to the straps, all right? So the straps come in two flavors, and I'm gonna show you comparison side by side. The J straps and the S straps. S straps are these ones right here. They have like an S curve to them, see that? The J straps are these guys right here, and they have more of a sloped towards the bottom arc out on them. What's the difference? Well, if you go on the website, they'll give you a really in-depth look at how to choose, but I'll tell you right now the gist of it. And there they are side by side to give you a better look. The J straps from what they say, all right, a real simple way that you could look at it is you'd say girls and guys. For the most part, that's usually true from what I've read on their website. For the majority of females, it seems that the S strap is the way to go. It's gonna fit the contour of your body better. And the J straps are typically for guys who don't have to worry about such anatomical uh, bonuses. Now, that's not always the case though. From what they say on the website, if you're like an athletic build male with kind of square shoulders and a larger chest, uh, just cause you're jacked or something, bro, you may find that the S straps are gonna work for you as well. Now, if you're on the fence about that, they make it pretty clear on the website too to just give them a call or send them an email and they'll really walk you through what the right thing to do is. And from my experience as well, it's not gonna be in the world if you get the pack with the different straps and you just don't like it. I think that you'll be just fine swapping it out and ultimately getting the right one. But that's a quick look at the difference between those straps. Between these straps and these hip belts, I've really found these packs to be super comfortable. In fact, that's something that I really wanna point out to you guys. In my journey going ultralight and then kind of coming back to being realistically ultralight, if you will. My previous pack was probably eight ounces, at least less than my current pack, the camo one over there. But it feels lighter. I'm telling you, this pack feels lighter because these better made straps, and that was an Osprey pack, the Osprey Hornet. I did love it, but this thing just blows it away in terms of comfort. The straps are nice and thick. They're designed properly. You've got options based on your body size and type, and then there's no comparison on these hip pads. And matter of fact, let me just show you. This is my former pack, trusty Osprey 46. Look at this, look at that. This was the, this was the, what? Yeah, I know, and it did work. I got by and I thought it was comfortable at the time. But when I moved to this system, it's amazing. I mean, look how thin that is. And of course this pack was probably, I think it was retired like five years ago, let alone when it first came out. Technology changes, but yeah, there's no comparison. And then the hip, you can't even call. This is what I considered an ultralight backpack before. Not going back to this. Look, this is the what they would call the hip belt, but there's no foam in there. It's just it's just fabric. It's really just kept it from sloshing side to side. Now, of course, I'm under 10 pounds base weight, so it wasn't the end of the world, but just the difference is pretty awesome. And I will point out for this model, the Ohm, they do recommend a max base weight of 15 pounds. That's everything in your standard system that doesn't include consumables, so food and water and fuel. And a total max weight, they say, of 30 pounds for this model. Now the circuit I was mentioning, for example, is 35 pounds max, so something else to keep in mind there, but I believe it. I would say you could definitely go up to 30 pounds in this system and be quite comfortable. You've got your adjustment points here for your sternum strap, so you can get your height right. And this is the one that goes right across your chest, right? So adjust that to your heart's content. Obviously you got your tabs down here to make the shoulder strap longer, shorter. And up top, the load lifters, as they are called, will adjust the distance between shoulder and back of the pack. In addition to that stuff, you've got some more shock cord with a toggle on it just to put stuff on, perhaps put a water bottle there and cinch it down on it or clip any favorite piece of gear to it. Another item that comes with it, and this is one of those removable items, are these straps right here, which when held in front of you, seems simple at first, gives you somewhere to put your hand while you're walking along. So you can still kind of swing your arms, but you're kind of pulling down on your pack. It seems simple. In fact, we even took them off on Sarah's first trip and then we realized she probably could have used them and she's had them on ever since. It only costs her like an ounce or two at the most, I would imagine. And it's just kind of nice. I mean, check it out and try it yourself, but somewhere to put your hands while you're walking. I've grown to like it actually. And then back here, we got a little loop so that you can pick this baby up nice and secure when you're first putting it on. So get it up in the air and then transfer it to your shoulders. Pretty standard stuff, but that's that. Also, now that I'm looking at it, you'll notice there is a little rivet or a grommet, I guess it is. So there's a drain hole at the bottom of these pockets so you don't fill these up with water, which is nice. Now, again, this is not waterproof. I use that pack cover, especially because of the top design, but I do find that it's a pretty nice water resistance to it and a light drizzle or something, or even if a downpour breaks out, you're gonna have a couple minutes to get your pack cover on and I wouldn't worry about it just soaking right through like just cloth or anything. All right, guys, I think that's it. That's them. That's our his and hers. ULA Ohm 2.0 
backpacks. We've quite enjoyed them. Again, for those of you that follow the channel more recently and didn't see those other videos, but you're wondering why we ended up with those packs, feel free to check out that other playlist for all the thoughts that went into it. And also there's some great comments in those videos from all of the viewers that are, in my opinion, priceless for somebody looking for a pack, even if you don't end up with the ohm. There are some great conversations in those threads on those videos about the pluses and minuses of a lot of packs out there. So feel free to check that out if you're in the market for a pack yourself. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, but that's the ULA ohm. I'm really looking forward to using it on future backpacking trips on this very channel. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.